Our hopes have been cauterized. Our imaginations infected. People have not forgotten what was promised to them in 1947 in Kashmir. It was in 1947 in August that India and Pakistan gained their independence and failed to reach an agreement on the sovereignty of Jammu and Kashmir, most of which remained with India. Kashmiris were never consulted. They were made invisible. In 1990, when I was just 13 years old, uh, my maternal grandfather was part of a protest demonstration against the molestation of women. So he was shot at. Around 50 people were killed and he was one of the persons killed. So it was primarily because of him that I got interested in why are people being killed at an age of 13. I became very angry. It was anger which was provoking me to do something. I was struggling with my own self. What is it that I would do would be the best revenge. Should I kill him? Should I spit at him? Should I shout at him? Should I hate him? Or what? I realized that I can do something which is more meaningful, where I would be involved in saving lives and not inciting violence and not becoming part of some revenge. Uh, and that's how I slowly uh, was encouraged to be a non-violent activist. There is, from last 70 years, a conflict going on between India and Pakistan uh, on a territory called Kashmir. India claims that it's an integral part, Pakistan claims that it's their part, and they're fighting over it. And people of Kashmir are also fighting for their liberation. And our neighbors are India, Pakistan and China. All of them are armed with nuclear weapons. So that's the place where I'm working as a human rights defender. Garkot village, Paramula district, May 28, 2010. One grave, 16 bodies. Identify your village as three male, police, male youth. The body of Ramzan of Lone Eight, and Ident, who were residents of Nadi Hotel, July 27, from the evidence available, it involuntarily disappeared and murdered by members of the Indian Armed Forces. Doing the type of work that Karam does day in and day out, um, talking to victims of human rights violation, investigating these violations, cases of torture, enforces appearances, mass graves, takes an enormous amount of resilience. All the military operations that have been conducted in the region with direct implication on civilians. It's not an exaggeration to say that without him and the work that the organizations that he's part of do, we wouldn't know half of what we know about the human rights violations that are happening in Indian and Minister Jammu and Kashmir. Combating terrorism is the official line. The Indian authorities have been able to operate um, with complete impunity under the guise of fighting terrorism. It's hard to get hard, solid data on the number of Indian troops in the region, but it's frequently referred to as the world's most militarized region. The visible aspect of militarization is the 700,000 troops, but there are so many invisible things about what militarization has meant in our lives. <laughs> Police in the 
لاشہ تہ قبر شم یوان خوابن مس مین کوشش یہ یاد تھو انٹرنلائزیشن اف لاس اینڈ ہارر از انٹینڈڈ ٹو پروڈیوس فیئر اینڈ آئسولیشن What we are trying to do now is to document our present. We are historians of the present. We are writing the history of our future generations so they know what we have gone through and why it is not possible for us to compromise and to surrender. Why is it important to remember? Because if the injustices here are forgotten, they will be repeated. The states are coming to what was hidden, what they were sophisticatedly hiding. We have unmasked them. In this effort, of course, we have lost a lot. Unfortunately, it's a truth around the world. People who are fighting monsters, with time, they become monstrous themselves. I'll realize that I would not let my anger channelize into hate. I feel successful because I did not become a monster while fighting the monsters. <laughs> <laughs>